Hello, I'm Virgil Perret from the Observatoire de la Finance, and I'm glad to welcome you to our Ethics and Trust Alumni webinar on digital currencies. To discuss this, I'm pleased to welcome Tara Anison, who is a delivery management lead at Elliptic, and Monika Zvaksina Pushnik, member of the Polish Academy of Sciences. Both Tara and Monika are alumni of the Global Prize Ethics and Trust in Finance for Sustainable Future, which, which has been initiated and is managed by the Observatoire de la Finance based in Geneva. I think in terms of what this means for decentralized currencies in the future, actually it's kind of good news because what we're watching is a real-time relocation of a very significant portion of the hash rate move around the world. There's no central intermediary controlling this or managing it. And whilst, as I say, there is a decrease in the hash rate at the moment, the Bitcoin protocol is set up to algorithmically adjust to this. So we're watching in real time the whole network basically react to a really big global event. And so far, there hasn't been any kind of security issues or any performance issues on the Bitcoin network. So I think that is actually whilst very disruptive um, elements be happening, it's largely positive in terms of decentralization. So we do need to make sure that whatever regulation we're putting in place is proportional. We need to make sure that we're not just copy and pasting traditional financial regulation, which was created in an era where we didn't have digital money, we didn't have the same technology that we have today. So I think that's really important when we're talking about ensuring we can protect consumers whilst also not stifling innovation, really making sure that the regulation we put in place is proportional and is very specific to the risks that we're trying to mitigate. And in crypto, that's certainly not the same risks in the traditional markets. So it does mean that our regulators need to have really good technical understanding of what DLT and blockchain technology is, what it can and certainly what it can't do and where those risks lie. The situation of financial institutions in this new environment and this new ecosystem would have to be understood from various angles because those intermediary or two tier systems also suggest that the banks should be responsible for the AML KYC and the client onboarding because the central banks do not have people, they do not have skill, they do not have man hours to sit with everyone to do this onboarding process, to verify the passport, to verify all the documents. So this gives banks additional obligations, additional costs, operational costs, IT costs that they would have to undergo. Uh, on the other hand, they, the CBDCs take a little bit from the bank's business or at least endanger the bank's business. So, so that would have to be, again, very carefully thought through. If central banks use the, the DLT uh, to uh, operate the central bank digital currency. I wonder what would be, and I don't know the answer to this one, I'm not a GDPR lawyer. Uh, how would be the, or maybe you Sarah know this, uh, the execution of the right to be forgotten and how can you make sure that your data gets wiped out from the blockchain? Because I understand that's the point of DLT that no data ever gets uh, deleted without the agreement of 51% or, or something like that. Uh, 